Tuesday Night Podcast. I'm John Masoni here with Venice Indian football head football coach John Peacock. And coach, uh, obviously, we came together here tonight because uh, things are getting somewhat back to normal in the, in the, <laughs> the west coast of Florida. And uh, we would be remiss to not mention the fact that we hope everybody out there is doing well after what Hurricane Ian did to our, to our nice yeah, little you know, area. We, we failed to talk about on the coach show. We, um, we actually got together on Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. Today's, yeah. No, today's Tuesday. Today's Tuesday, yeah. Actually, we got together on Monday, um, and Rick Michaels from Chick-fil-A donated 300 Chick-fil-A sandwiches and um, got together with a few players and went, went into Laurel and a couple other neighborhoods and um, delivered – Chick-fil-A sandwiches to the families that didn't have power or water or anything. Um, it's a nice surprise. And every time we saw uh, workers, you know, uh, FPL men or pole men or um, people taking care of the trees, we'd stop and give them a Chick-fil-A sandwich. It was it was really one of the neatest. You know, we always say like when we do the what we do for Thanksgiving is a is a pretty cool experience uh, for those kids and and seeing the joy it brings to people, but. Yesterday was a little different because um, I think, you know, we do it on Thanksgiving. People are expecting it. Sure. You know, so you go up and knock on somebody's door and you have Chick-fil-A sandwiches for them. And they're just like, what? What? Yeah. <laughs> what are you yeah. selling? I'm, uh, no, man. We're just This is, you know, we're just, you know, Rick Michaels and that Chick-fil-A in Pelican Plaza um, has donated Chick-fil-A sandwiches. And um, we're handing them out. And we had the kids in the jerseys. And. It was pretty neat, you know, um, and it was just really. It was. Re- I thought it was really cool just to see the joy it brought to people. You and know, I, I think that I think that a lot of kids. Um, it's an extension now that they after they do it here, they'll do it again elsewhere. Yeah, you know. So and, and a lot of times, you know, how often did this? Did some of the kids actually get a chance to see, you know, how other people are doing and, right. and whatever they kind of they're you know they're worried about school and girlfriends and football and whatever right. else be going on. And so that's a different, different perspective to see that stuff. And then also uh, want to bring up tomorrow morning. Um, I, I put it out on social media, but we're doing a stadium cleanup. Um, there's a lot of things that need to be uh, kind of just cleaned up in our stadium. You know, we're, we're looking at, we're, what are we three or 10 days away yeah. from a right? game. Ten, yeah. 10 days away from playing in our stadium. Uh, the scoreboard works. Uh, we got to see the jumbotron still works, um, but the you know we got to you know the twenty or the forty second clocks are kind of bent over. All the fencing on the interior fences are down. Um, all the signs that we've have are who Forever. knows where they're at. Yeah, so we got to yeah. we got to kind of get together and kind of bring all that stuff back and to one place. And you know, if there's anyone that works on fences or knows how to put a fence back up. Uh, that would be great if they could come out. Um, the fence, I think the, the poles themselves are, the structure, the poles themselves are good. I think the fence just actually blew off. Yeah. The interior fence, but I think that, the, that's chain link too. So it yeah, should, yeah, that uh, yeah. So they and the bigger fences on the outside, um, uh, those actually I think those came the you know the poles came down with them because the, there were some teams that left their banners on them right. and didn't take right. their banners right. off but I think uh, other than that and then we got to get the scoreboard out of there somehow um, it comes off in three sections it's not very heavy I just got to figure out if I'll be able to take it apart or not I don't know it's been up there for what since 19 a long yeah a long well time. that that was a new one of the, a yeah it was a new one, one. so yeah. I think it was that was since 07 but you know can you imagine the rust since 07 on yeah. there with, yeah. where we're at um, but just and then the the weight room Roof is everywhere. That's the big thing. I mean, that's that's just trash to school. So we got to get all that stuff up um, and kind of clean up. So whoever is is uh, willing or able or has some time tomorrow, uh, we're going to be there at nine o'clock and we're going to uh, do a little stadium cleanup. Yeah. Are they are they, are they tarping the roof as far as the weight room is concerned, or what are they doing with that? Uh, it's probably farther down their list of yeah, things say. they got to fix. But uh, I, I don't know. Um, but I think the the structure itself is fine. So we'll just maybe just when it rains, we'll get wet. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well I think rainy season about over, though, right? Hopefully. It, well, it's, I, the like, next thing I've seen in in my little weather forecast situation is rain maybe eight ten days away, but nothing significant at this yeah. point. So let's keep our fingers crossed. There are always still things brewing out there. You don't know, but yeah. this cool air is def- definitely changing the the, the the narrative pretty quickly. It'll, yeah. The Gulf air waters will start going down in temperature, so that's always a good thing as well. So and days are getting shorter. So I, we were playing football right now. We would be kicking off in the dark. 
and that's when yeah. you know. When you know, that's when you know it's starting to change. And no, no time, no time change. It's, the, it's that short, much yeah. shorter of a day. So that's always good. That's when football starts getting exciting. With that football in, in particular, we hadn't talked too much since the last time we played. Well, we, well, we, we haven't talked about our game versus Seminole. Right. Well, so the last, you know, last time we were here was the, we were prior to the Seminole game. And very big game. I mean, if you if you guys are into watching the where, where the standings and where we sit with different things. We're, we're, you know, we're 4S, they're 4M. We were number one in 4S, they're number one in 4M. So, I mean, you're looking at, you know, the two, the two dog, big dogs at that moment uh, playing in that game, and, and S, S conquered M in that one. Which yeah, is I mean, big, like big I said situation. before, yeah. before, before the game, is like this is gonna, this is gonna mean a lot, not just, not just as far as us playing each other, but it's gonna mean a lot down the road in December when there is a state champion crowned. Right. Um, because there's someone's gonna have an asterisk by their name. And and that's and that's one of the things that I think they, they probably didn't really account for. I mean, I think everybody's like, hey, we're doing honest talk. Oh, we're doing S, the S kit teams a flavor. They can win a championship now because they couldn't do it before because right. all the all the M's were going to get it. Right? Like, but we've talked about this before. Yeah. Like the four S, I think is is the oddball you're compared right. to the rest. Right. I think you're right. And so with that, you know, because because if you think about it. In a lot of cases, it was the Lakelands and 4S, right? Right. So they won a state championship, and we won two. Osceola. Right. So you, so you look at it and say there's – so it wasn't like that the, the S's were, like, left out. We, th- those are the ones that are going to be there. But still, I think a lot of that's going to be that. Now it's going to be like, okay, now we won. And then you'll say, well, what'd you win? Because it looks like the S's well, beat the M's already. We might, well, yeah, we might win – you know, we might have tainted that championship. It's going to it, – you know, with social media the way it is, everything else, someone's bringing it up. Yeah. Whoever that may be, but someone's bringing it up, and they're going to be like, what? You know, and it's going to say, Cause li- oh, I mean, cause you never would have made it past this guy. So don't yeah. we did it last year. Well, because, you know, the, 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 the difference is that we would both be 8A. Right. With Seminole and Venice would both. Right. That would have been. We, would, we were last year. We would, we could have been, been, been That could have been 8A, 1 versus 2 yep. in season. Right. Yep. Whatever that would have been. So. So it definitely, it, like I said, going into it, it, it was, it was going to mean a lot as far as that, that goes. And, um, you know, I knew kind of like right before kickoff it was not going to turn out good for them, you know, what, how they approached the game and how they're, they were taunting us uh, yeah. coming out of the uh, tunnel. Waiting, waiting to taunt us. Yeah, waiting to yeah. taunt us. Yeah. And, um, you know, w- once, once I saw that, I said, you know what, they, they, it's not going to end well for them. I, I knew it. It never does with teams that have zero respect yeah. for their opponent no, like agree. that. Um, you know, the teams that cause us problems and the teams that, uh, you know, are able to, to knock us off are the teams that come in there and play football. Silent assassins. Not come in there, there and, just do and, what and they're uh, gonna do. you know, we had people with masks on and uh, <laughs> just a, a total, uh, you know, I, I have no room for that in my program, um, but – you know, some people do, but I don't. Just that's just me. You know, some people have a different approach. No, no, it's it's again, and whatever whatever floats your boat, I suppose. Yeah. It was gonna, you know, and they're successful, so some they're doing a lot right. Um, but again, at final score, I guess we haven't told you twenty four seventeen, uh, Indians with it with a victory over the Sanford Seminole uh, Hawk. What are they were like Warhawks. Well, Haw- yeah, I think it was the Hawks. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, but I, I I have actually got to the point now where I don't even talk about the. The, the the nicknames anymore. I just call them. I I, I don't know why I, I have a hard time remembering them for some reasons. So I just stick with the whatever they wherever yeah. they're from, unless it's you know we you know talked a little bit about the game is you know we came out and we we talked about this on the coaches shows. We yeah. had we basically spotted them 14 points and it, it wasn't off anything that they did. Is like it was like almost like. Um, you know, Coach Wheatley talks about volleyball like unforced errors yes. all the time. And that's what we did. I mean, we came out, we shanked a punt. Uh, we had a quarterback, running back fumble in the backfield. Yeah, it's a, that from, exchange, you know, yeah. No contact. Um, you know, and they, they did hit a big pass on us. Um, but with that said, I mean, that pass, like, Elliot Washington had that guy blanket <laughs> covered. Like, and then, yeah. I, you know, and he went, you know, Elliot went to swat the ball away and missed the ball. Um, but, you know, we had a timeout close to, Close to after that play, and you know, I went out and told Elliot. I said, "Elliot, man, shake it off. Mm-hmm. You had great yeah. coverage. You're gonna make some plays for us tonight. Make the next play." Yeah, and, and I mean, that you. was. I mean, he had great coverage. I mean, it wasn't 
he didn't do anything wrong. I mean, just didn't make that play. For as athletic as Elliott is and how fast he can run and everything else, I've noticed that when he makes, when he's into the game and when he's really at his strike, is how he hits. He, he brings it. I mean, he's, he's a bigger kid than people he maybe, maybe recognizes. Yeah. He's playing against, I mean, that kid from Seminole, what, 6'4", maybe? He was, he was a yeah. he was pretty he big was, kid. Yeah, he was put together. They, were, they, were, they had two really good receivers, uh, four and four one. Four and one. Yeah, so and one, like I said, he, he was physical, but I think that um, Elliott, you know, got was, was not being pushed off his mark. Uh, I think he hit him pretty hard a few times. Um, that I think that's yeah, there was got one him play. Off his, got him off his one play late in the game where I think uh, he had en- had enough. Yeah, because he hit him in the ribs. Yeah, I want to say something it, yeah, like that. It, it, and it was it was, it was, yeah. it, was it was it was clean. It was just it was just a good hard tackle. And so that being the case, I mean that's that's where you, when you start seeing that that physicality starts to step up, and that just that just let, lends itself to everybody started to play a little bit better. Damon Damon Wilson had another great game. Uh, affected effect of the game we always talk about you know his his play affects so much more than the stat sheet right um so, like i said somebody asked me hey how many sacks did they may have i said I, i'm not sure he had one every time we needed one i know that right yeah when it, uh, when know, it counted yeah we when, every it, time yeah. we needed him to have a sack he had a sack you know he made a huge third down play um he had this he had a sack to end the game he had a uh, he had another big third down sack i think he had he, he drew Two or three holding calls. I mean, they they were had to tackle him. I mean, the whenever they left him alone with the the tackle their tackles, uh, they had to tackle him right. to to block him. And and then it, the weird thing about it was when they, when they did tackle them, they act like the, they <laughs> were shocked anything. that they yeah. got a holding call. Like, well, yeah, I, I guess there's no tackling call. But you can't put your elbow. <laughs> you can't put the crux of your arm around somebody's throat. Yeah, and then yeah. Take them to the ground. You yeah. can watch that every every night. It's pretty. Uh, that's uh, pretty football. That's going to be easy yeah, call. It's pretty simple. Um, we're going to say something. Like, not to interrupt you, but uh, talking about the defense in particular, you didn't have a, we don't have a, as much time as we do here on the coach show. But talk about Jack Huber's play. Oh, Jack. We talked about it on the coach show. Jack is Jack had an unbelievable game. Physical game. Um, he's been playing lights out and. And, and like I said in the coach show, I know now that I said that, that he's going to play absolutely horrible our next game. <laughs> but then we'll kind of regroup after that. We'll come back. You know, right, right. You know, the old saying, you pat him on the back, you know, it just doesn't turn point, out well. But at this point, he's, he's had some games where no, he's, 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 yeah, he's, in a he's row really that been, he's doing something if, if you're looking at one guy on the defense and you're like, you know, who's been the big surprise? I mean, Jack Huber's the big surprise. Yeah. And then, but I will say this, that so all, all the new guys on the defense, um, They've all sort of started starting to find their mark. Yeah, you Eli right. Seed has some really great games early. Uh, Car Dalton's d- been doing his thing. Uh, Dominic Woods doing his thing. And then if they look at, look out and say you got, you know, Atkins is stepping up and he's he's, you know, he's making plays. And, and Galloway, I mean, the, the kids, you know, he he looks like he could be a receiver, and he's playing D tackle and he's holding his own. He's made a he made yeah. a key play. So no, they're all they're all. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to can't remember, but I'm saying no, you're everybody's exactly there. Right. Everybody's doing some stuff. Yeah, there. you're exactly right. These guys that we didn't have. We didn't. Really, we weren't real sure of. Have now kind of. You're like, all right. Well, he is coming to his own. This right. is. You know, we can count on this guy. You know, he has. He has learned it, and you know, obviously they were thrown into the fire very quickly, and yes. and, and a flaming fire. Yeah. Here at you that. go, first game, give right. it a go. Yeah. It, but I, you're right that now they now I think you're. There's no excuse now. You've been. You played the best. There's no right. excuse. It's time to play football. And you're right. They they have. They have stepped up and played in our offensive line. Our offensive line, I felt like, you know, every year, you know, that's what we could count on is, you know, we're going to run the ball, we're going to have a tempo, and then uh, third and fourth quarter roll around, it's going to be a different ball game. Right. And, you know, Friday, our last Friday, or however many Fridays ago, against Seminole, that was the deal. Like, yeah, it was tough sledding early, but third and fourth quarter, like if it went, if, if it went, to overtime or went to a fifth quarter, it, the score would have been out of hand because right. they, they were not stopping us anymore and they were not going to get any more yards on our, our defense. A lot of times, sometimes you look at the game from just from, just from, from the, the eye test. And so the eye test for me with the offensive line is that so when the play starts, there are times early in the year that when the play started, they were beat. The guy, he was beat like within, the, within one right. second of the play. Now you watch the play start and you see I'm, they're, they're where they, sp- or they should right. be. You don't see somebody who's like, oh, I missed the count, snap count, or I didn't put my feet right, or whatever, whatever. Right. But they look like they're in the right spots. Now, can they be beat off from that? Possibly yes, possibly no. 
but they're right, from the get-go, they're kind of in the right spot. It's, start, it's starting to come together. It is, it's starting to come together with everything. And, you know, that's the, that's the bad thing about the hurricane. It's like, golly, we're just, we're just now yeah. starting to click. Now we're taking two weeks off. And, uh, the only thing I say that it's only two weeks, it's sort of like an extra bye week. But you, so do you want an extra bye yeah. week? Not when, you get, not when you're gaining momentum. Because right. last year after the bye week, we were on, we were on a, a, you know, it just, it just, the momentum just built. And that was even better. So hopefully that it's yeah. Our it's bye week last year was week one. Yeah, <laughs> but now you're hoping that you have this, you know, this re ramp up, and you have enough time to kind of get yourself sort of right. reacclimated. Yeah. So, you know, we're going to come back, and you know, right now the the definite and for sure our next game is going to be a week from this Friday at home versus Sarasota, and then after that, uh, we're not sh- exactly sure of what the next week is going to look like. It'll either be their home. It'll either be a home game versus Palmetto, or it'll be an away game at Riverview. And then after that, it should be like it reads on Max Preps. Right, that'll be great. With that, we're going to take our for our only break, our break for tonight on the podcast. And when we come back, um, we'll do our our sponsor spotlight tonight. We have our sponsor spotlight tonight, our spotlight sponsor. Well, we we, we might have something. Maybe we'll, we'll talk a little bit about something, and then we'll talk a little yeah. bit about some. What the rest of the season's got to bring ahead of us, and, and see how we uh, how how things are going to roll out for us. With that, we'll take our break here and see you back here in about 90 seconds. Logies of Venice, located at 652 East Venice Avenue. Come eat in a family-friendly environment and enjoy hand-tossed pizzas made with fresh homemade pizza dough. Bogies has been open for 17 years and has been voted best wings in town several consecutive times. Inside, we feature the Venice Hall of Fame, 37 flat screen TVs, and arcade games for the kids. Bogies of Venice, where good sports come to play. What does Douglas Jeep Chrysler Dodge Ram and Venice High football have in common? The perfect team and the perfect lineup. Douglas Jeep Chrysler Dodge Ram will always go the extra yard so you can score big with the area's best selection and savings. So if you're looking for a championship vehicle lineup and a dealership that tackles the competition, visit Douglas Jeep Chrysler Dodge Ram in Venice. And if you're looking for a championship football lineup, check out the Venice High football team. Who supports Venice High football? Douglas does! And we're back here at Bogies for our second half. You caught us in a little bit of a conversation. Yeah, it was a, it, by the way, uh, Aaron Judge, Judge broke the record, 62 home runs. So he broke the Yankee record. And whether or not you believe that's the, the real record or Barry Bonds' record what's is the real the, record. What's the Barry Bonds' record? 73. Oh, well, he's got a long way oh, to go. Oh, he ain't going to make it. He's only five games. I mean, after he struggled to get 62 to get there. He was yeah. kind of he was kind of on a roll, and then he kind of, like anything else, start pressing a little bit. It's in the back of your mind. You yeah, know? well, maybe he'll calm down and get. Yeah, get five or six, and we can get real close. That yeah. would be kind of neat. But, no, so that was kind of something we were watching. But um, sponsor spotlight tonight. We're talking about that. We're, again, we, this was kind of, we didn't really know we were going to do the show until now because we weren't sure how. Yeah, I called unraveling. them. I told them about, what, 1 o'clock? Hey, let's, we, need to, we need to do the show because we haven't done it in two weeks. Yeah. But we're so, going to go with Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A. We've already done Chick-fil-A. But, you know, we just got to give a big shout-out to, to Rick Michaels and the Chick-fil-A at Pelican Plaza. I mean, what a, I had to go in and uh, talk to him after and just let him know what a, like a great thing that he did. Um, and what joy it brought to those people, and um, it just, it's just like I said, it was just weird, the shock on their face, like, yeah. what you're giving me something right. that I didn't ask for, or, and, you know, and then, and then not only for to that happen, then you see the kids that are there, and they're wearing their jerseys. Yeah. It's, it's sort of very communal. It's, it's it's kind of a thing that the kids can get into, and the people. I and mean, who doesn't like a Chick Fil A sandwich? Now who's and who is not going to be watching our podcast if they can they know where it is since we gave them a Chick Fil A. Right. Yeah, you have to come. Yeah, every time we hand a Chick Fil A sandwich, we say, "Hey, <laughs> Pelican Plaza, Chick Fil A, and go, go Indians." Yeah. You know, like, come on. There you go. Who, I mean, who doesn't like a Chick Fil A sandwich? Listen, I haven't met anybody who doesn't. The thing is, I'll, I'll say this, and I don't want to talk, but one of our concession stands has Chick Fil A, and there's a few people who like to go get it. I'm, I might be on that list <laughs> next time. I don't even it's know. It's good that, stuff, that man. Concession stand only was working now. Yeah, <laughs> that's one they yeah. didn't check out there. We'll have to see. Well, we can always work out. Do I tell you outside what? If there, you know, one thing about it is the concession stands are standing. We need to figure out who built those things. What year were they built? They were probably built when they were they were making bomb shelters still. So it was like 1950. Yeah. It's got to be solid concrete. 60 something. Yeah, and it's totally kind of like the locker room of uh, things we had to bust up. Yeah. Those, that, those, those cement things yeah, you sat on? Impossible yeah. to bust up, yeah. Yeah, they, they made that forever. That was, that was a forever. That's thing. when they did, they, the money and the materials were not 
a thing. There was nothing about comfort. Yeah. It was a matter of how long it was going to last right. if you could wash it with a pressure hose. So with that, thank you to Chick-fil-A. And uh, as always, we appreciate everything you do. One thing they do also do as well, we need to mention while we're here, is they do usually bring out some breakfast sandwiches for, oh, our, right. golf, for our golf tournament, which has been delayed. The golf tournament's delayed. But, yes, they bring out sandwiches for the golf tournament, but they also bring out sandwiches every single Friday yeah. of a home game. Or not a home game, just any game. So, um, and I said after we after we put it on Seminole, I said it, those, the sandwich, the biscuits kicked in about the third quarter. <laughs> they did. Yeah. Got their energy so we owe it all to the biscuits. So, and then, but again, um, the, 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 quick, the golf tournament, if you're watching, uh, it's not this Saturday. There's just too much, um, I would say, Debris. It'd be like putt putt. Damage. Yeah. Too, many, too many trees down. Not happening. Yeah, we could have to hit it around a tree and off a squirrel's head or something along those lines. So um, stay tuned. I know that there's been some well, tentative they, days. No, they, they said it. Did they set it? Yeah, November 12th. Yeah. Okay, so November 12th should be the next, the new date, and um, we'll be rocking and rolling again. So everybody who's uh, signed up, you're still signed up. That'll be after our first playoff win. That's what we would that, that, right. that'd be, that'd be a nice that's a nice way to wake up on a Saturday. I think, I think Chick-fil-A that's Chick-fil-A sandwich, yeah. some golf, yeah. libations, and a victory in your pocket. That's a great way to get started. So, yeah, don't forget that. And, and we'll, again, look on the website, and we'll make sure you guys, everybody, tell what's been posted, and you can tell all your friends, and that'll be a good thing. They'll know yeah. where to go. Don't go to Waterford this week, though. They're still cleaning up stuff. Yeah, so there's going to be a couple, couple weeks for the opening. Lots of trees down and whatnot. But, again, and everybody's in the same boat. Um, the re- recovery is always a slow process, especially with a category. We, I know I'll it's still a four, thing. but it was a five-ish in its in its in its in its uh, punch. I'll tell sure. you this: um, I, I went early, or actually late. What, what day was the hurricane on? Tuesday, it was a Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday so, morning. So Wednesday after the power went off, I lost contact. My wife and daughter and my stepdaughter went to um, our Touchdown Club president's house, Jessica's house. Um, because they didn't, I, I guess her house is safer. I didn't get into all that. Um, and they, I, I, I said, I'm, well, I'm staying here. If, if they felt safer, it was all better for you. That's what's I'm staying here. Yep. You know, I, I didn't know why our house wasn't safe, but <laughs> apparently it's not. So I'm staying here. But I lost contact, and then I lost power. And then the cell services went down. So they said after after eight o'clock the winds would die down so right at about nine o'clock i went to go i was like i gotta go check on them right because right, yeah. I, I didn't see i didn't hear from them see what's going for the on. two hours of the main main deal so what i was like all right well, i'm gonna go check on them so i i drove from my house to jessica's house at nine o'clock and i'm telling you when i say i was the only person yeah dumb enough to it be was, on the it road was still blowing at nine o'clock i was the only person dumb enough to be on the road and it was a disaster area like yeah. you think it looks bad now like i had to change lanes 15 to 20 times because there was a tree slapped down in the middle like you couldn't go any further right um i will say it is amazing how fast people have cleaned up uh the day after the storm on thursday morning right thursday morning yep everyone is out um cleaning up and i was like golly they're they're up here at 8 a.m., they're already picking up their stuff. I was like, I felt like a loser. I was like, <laughs> you know, I laid around a little bit, and I finally said, all right, well, I guess I'm going to go pick up stuff because if I don't pick up stuff, right. everyone's going to look at me like I'm a loser in the neighborhood. So, I mean, everyone had their stuff up, up by the road that day. I think I think it has a lot to do with you, you, the, the length of time you were stuck in the house because that's an all-day event. That was a, I mean, that was hours and hours and hours of being beat My up by that My favorite place to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I think a lot of that, that, and I think a lot of that is that that anxiety and that energy you get from that. You want to go out and do something. You kind of want to be like, "What am I doing here?" Because you just want you want to get back to normal as fast as you can. Yeah. So you take care of your own little spot, and that's what you do. In but I mean, I'm just shocked. I mean, then I drove, I drove back there on Thursday morning at around eleven, and it looked like a different world. Like mm-hmm. people had already picked up all this you stuff. Get needed to go. I mean, it was nuts. But I mean, just it's amazing how fast. You know, one, amazing how fast it all happened. And then, two, amazing how fast it's all getting back to normal. Like, you drive down my neighborhood, and it's you couldn't tell other than all the piles of trash. I drove down Venice Avenue on the way here, and there were some places that were manicured. Like, it looks like they just yeah. got the grass is cut, the bushes are trimmed. Yeah. I don't see anything on, like, that's pretty good. I mean, some, I mean obviously, there's each degree of, of, of uh, I work in mobile home parks. 
you know, and there's no yeah. way you're cutting the grass up there for a while. That's there was a sure. big tree that went down the side of my house, and I was like, gosh, I guess I'm going to pay 400 bucks to get this thing out of here. And then my neighbors made me feel so bad because they're chainsaw and stuff. So I got my chainsaw out, and I cut the thing down. I, I got it by the road. That's it. It may be there for four <laughs> yeah. weeks, but it's going to get it's yeah. out, it's there ready to go. Yeah, no doubt. So no doubt. Uh, back to football, uh, I thought, I thought, you know, hats off to our kids. You know, we like I said, we – we spotted them 14 points, played absolutely the worst f- five minutes of football that I've ever been a part of yeah, as just, far as coaching. Like they, like they um, forgot what they were doing I for mean, a while there. Yeah. Pre-snap penalties, fumbles, uh, shank punts, um, you know, big plays. It was just almost like, oh, my gosh, like what are, what are we doing here? And it was almost like you're, I was sitting there thinking, what, wh- where are we going from here? We're going to be one and three. What, what are we doing? What kind of team do we have? And and the you know obviously mentally I was like things always run through my head and I was thinking what what am I going to say to these kids I'm gonna I think I'm gonna lose them right right but they did an awesome job staying in the game focusing on uh, the next play you know the defense stepped up in a huge huge way you know after that after that five minutes you know they played the rest of the game and. Uh, you know, for the next 43 minutes, only gave up a, a field goal. Um, yeah. Every Everybody sort of, it just galvanized. And I think, you know, there's no one play you can say, but you can just see like everybody was like, they kind of shook off their heads a little bit and said, no, let's go play football. And then the momentum just, it was just a, it was a slow climb. Yeah. But then when, but once it kicked in gear, it was on. It was yeah. On. And like I said, I think, I think midway through the third quarter, it was, there was no doubt. There was no doubt. They were getting tired. Uh, you know, we we started looking like uh, what a Venice team looks like and what a Venice team does, and that was when. So after the game, I'm like, finally, finally, we 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 are starting to look like a Venice football and, team. And I'll say something, not not for nothing. I'm not, I know you scheduled what you scheduled, but I we've come off a, a rough run of games early in the year, done pretty well, and then when sometimes you get when you get past that that preseason run, the beginning of the season run schedule, you play a team that you're supposed to beat. And you don't, and you have that same maybe like letdown in some ways, and it doesn't usually. It, it kind of get it gets mo- this momentum thing. I think this one, the, the letdown was a little shorter. I think. I think oh, it was. It couldn't have been much, we've, we've, much we've longer. We've had bad halves. We've had, right. but that was like, hey man, we, we just messed up for the first five minutes. We need to get this thing going. And it wasn't a a lucky bounce or a one play. It was just no. like it was just an overall, the way the whole team's mentality just switched. Got right, got smart. Penalties were low for for our, you know, we've been good with the penalties the last few weeks, and so that's another good thing. Good thing that's, that's turned around for all that stuff. But yeah, I think it's going to be a situation where that game sort of gave them the formula on how to start every game, continue to play that way. That's a winning. It's a winning football. Yeah, it's winning football. So the next game is Sarasota. I think Sarasota is uh, three and two um, district game. So obviously it's. Um, Extremely important. Um, you know, we have two district games and the, the automatic berth for the district champion. They just started coming out with the rankings, the FHSA rankings, and they said it was going to be very, very similar to uh, the Max Preps rankings, which is not the case because looking at it, um, you look at Max Preps, they have us ranked number one and four. S. They have us ranked number seven overall in the state. Right. And uh, they have us ranked like the thirtieth in the country. Um, and the FHSA ranking. I think what they said. The only thing they take out of of the Max Preps formula is the point differential of your games. What the score is. Okay. Or how much you beat somebody by, or how much you get beat by. And um, so. The FHSA has us ranked 54th in the state, and Max Preps have us ranked seventh. Right, right. So, so I what I what I don't I in, I look at it from this perspective too. I think that they look at things. They're looking at records. That's no, but all no, but at. no, no. They they are, Max Preps does it for them, and their only thing they take out is the point differential. And the one thing that was blowing my mind was okay, I don't well, get that. It's, all right, well. 
the two losses then are a wash because it's a loss. Right. There's no so the point differential shouldn't matter there. And then our wins, like we beat Naples by one point, and we just beat another team by seven points. And Max Prep has us as the number seven team in the state, and then FHS has to have us fifty fourth. So I don't know. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but. Um, no, I, I think I think we'll see us start to climb when our record gets better. Now we're a 500 football right, team, right? And it'll start to climb. I think that, I think a lot, that's a little bit of what that's what, they, what they've got. And they just I think sometimes look and say, well, who are you playing? I don't know if they even. I don't. Know no, Max Preps them. does it for them. Yeah. They have the same formula Max Preps uses, except they take out the point differential. Of the, they take the score out. They don't they, they don't put the score in as a factor. It's, it's a huge difference, though. I mean, you think about what it is. Yeah. So, I, I mean, is it that big of a difference? Go from seven to fifty-four. Yeah, I mean that's. I mean they're supposed to be. You're, you're supposed to be. You know, like, um, and the reason they take out the points is because they don't want people running it up. Sure, right. But Max Preps already does the points, so they're going to take into those. But people going to run it up anyway. Right, right. You know what I mean? So it doesn't. It, I don't know. That, 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 and running it up is relative to the situation. Yeah. You know, I mean, so. someone got beat seventy-two nothing last week, or this, or yesterday, or Orton, or I don't know who it was. Someone. Jesuit beat someone seventy-two to nothing or something like that. That's not easy to do. No. Not when it's thirty. Not when you get a thirty-five and they t- they start that clock running, yeah. it's not easy to do. So, although I know we, we said one time Naples did it with they like six or seven. Well, they don't start the running clock till the second half. Naples Naples scored sixty-three and a quarter. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah, that's they they were yeah that's a, that is a lot. There's no doubt about that. Um, again, so again, the district is like you said, two teams or three teams. Review Sarasota. Um, you're talking possibly doing back to back, Sarasota. Yeah, we don't know what we don't know what the following week's going to look like. Like I said, we're trying to move. You know, Riverview plays Lake Gibson, and we're supposed to play Palmetto. We're seeing if, if if Lake Gibson and Palmetto will play, and then we'll play Riverview behind that. I don't don't think it's the best move for us to squeeze um, the the two games in that we missed um, in that three or four week period. Right, right. And again, so so you end up the season with so many games, but again. There are extenuating circumstances. This is not like something, you know. This is, this hey, is you know, it might huge be huge. It might situation. be good for some programs, but our program, you know, we have we have a goal in mind, right? And it's it, and it's never been fifteen and zero. It's never been a, a number and O or a, n- a certain amount of wins. It's been, you know, at the end of the year, you're you're getting sized for a ring, right? And like I said, so in the, in all again, and the easiest way to get that started is to win your district. So yeah. you got to make sure you this. And again, these. It, what they, people don't, I mean, it's kind of hard to believe, but it, yes, it is the, that's, those are the games that matter the most. Those are the ones that you're yeah, focused, I mean, super you, focused on. If you could go two and eight and uh, make the playoffs. Right. You, yeah. you don't want to, but no, you no, can't. Don't want, you don't want to do that. But. And that's the next day, and that's, that's why you say that, that these are, are very important games. And again, and we have to take every team we play from this point forward as, as, as serious as you can, prepare for them as much as you can. And with that, going into this week, preparation starting next week is obviously you have to really put together a, something to, regarding conditioning and not muscle pulls and we talked right. about it a little earlier about all that stuff so you got to make sure that's all taken care of because that's going to be another another thing to consider because you know kids are kids i mean heck it wasn't really good you could do much the last couple of weeks anyway you could you know you maybe keeping yourself in that that kind of shape right. but uh now it's ready to get started again and you got to get back into that high gear as fast as possible right um if in with that question wise What's harder to get ramped back up again in offense, your your passing game or your rushing game? I mean, you, are you are you more? It's easier to get the running game going, or is it easier to get the passing game going? As far as that, that that's I concerned. think everything's going to be affected. Um, we will just got to be smart about how we approach everything, and um, the big thing is, is, you know, what's what's our retention going to be? You know, we we have been having, you know, Coach Hunter has been meeting with the offensive line on Zoom, um, so. You know, I'll be, hopefully retention will, will stay a little bit better. And, you know, those are all young guys. So that's, those are the things that you're worried about. And then just I think just the, the overall, like, you know, coming off that this the Seminole win is, you know, you've, you've, you're starting to feel like, all right, we're starting to click here. Right. It's starting to all make sense. It's starting to come together. Then you have these days off. And, you know, a week, I think you might look at like, wow, that's really – kind of helped us, especially with what we just went through. Right. Um, but having two weeks is, is an awful lot. But uh, I, I think I think we could use it. We can make it into a positive, and we can, it can make it help us 
if we're smart about it. I mean, obviously, as a game plan goes and as a offense goes, you know, you don't want to get to yourself to where you're, you're, um, the kids are, are, you know, don't have retention and, you know, as much as you think they would. Right. Um, you know, so we just got to be smart in that way. Yeah, no, I mean, again, you have to kind of get it back on track right. uh, with that. And with that, uh, anybody maybe benefiting from the t- two weeks off? You're going to get anybody back, or maybe well, you know, Brooks. Here? Brooks, I think one thing um, I told Brooks, I think it was probably good that you got a rest because he was, he had a sh- kind of a shoulder like a, a, sp- a AC sprain. I think that might, might have been good and good for him. And um, I think overall, just as a team, you know, uh, even you know, I think it might be good for Finn. Finn was getting kind of beat up. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, overall, as like a. a a team as far as the physical part and the, um, you know, as far as the nicks and bruises, I think it's great for us. Yeah, and you know? Gator Wilder had a couple little things going on with him right now. His ankle, ankle, but he was back. Um, so that, but still, again, that may help him, you know, have a Anybody on defense getting back or anybody? I think everybody was pretty good, right? Well, yeah, we do have somebody coming back. Big surprise coming back. Good, good. Big surprise coming back. So that's, yeah, that's 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 a nice situation then yeah. if, that's, if that's what happens. Yeah, if we see, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I know. Yeah, 55. 55, yeah. 55 is back, um, and 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 that is going to be a huge boost to our defense. Um, and that, that you know, th- this two weeks helped them. He was supposed to play um, at, on against Riverview last week, last Friday. Last Friday, yep. Last Friday. You should have been last. Should have been last Friday. Yeah. Yeah, he the was going to play at Riverview last Friday. So this gives him. Uh, extra week and a half for recovery, so that's that's a good thing for him. No doubt. I tell you what, he's it's been impressive just watching him, um, you know, you know rehab and um, the way he's moving now and how physical he is now uh, with his leg. You know, just I just keep I keep talking to him constantly about you know the big things going to be up here. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. You know, and he, you know, it, so far like I've I put him through drills. There've been days where. I just go with him during endo and work him um, just to get him in shape. Because I don't want to be – I don't want to be battling – of course, we're talking about Trenton Kentai. Um, I don't want him to be battling him being in shape or out of shape when he comes back. I don't want that to be a battle. Right. You know, because when, when, that, when, you, when you have that, then that's kind of when injuries occur anyway. So we're going we're gonna to put him on like a, a – you know, we're going to have a, a system for him as far as the snaps that he's going to play. Um, and bring him back slowly. We're not going to obviously not going to throw him in a game and have him play 80 reps the first game. We're going to probably uh, have a nice little pinch, pitch count for him. And um, and we talked about defense earlier. I mean, Galloway's done a nice job. Yeah. I mean, it's not like I mean he's made big plays that win game winning plays against Naples, causing a strip a strip on, on on a fumble. And so you you look at that and you say, yeah, I'm comfortable with get on in there and, and give. Get yeah, but it, when get, you bring in, you're bringing a. a uh, you know, one of your most vocal leaders back, and you're bringing, you know, one of your top defensive players from a state championship year back sure. that you haven't had. It's going to be a big boost for us. It really, you know, if anything, it just mentally, it's going to be a big boost. And I tell you what, it, you know, it's going to be. Um, they're gonna they're gonna have issues if they if if any team decides like, all right, we're going to scheme for Damon Wilson, right, and we're going to single up 55. Because um, you're going to see 55 start having a really big year then, and uh, then people are going to have to make decisions on. Yeah, you got to We're going to we're going to play this. Pick your poison. We're going to we're play this squared up. And a lot and a lot now that also affects how well the linebackers are going to play. Oh, too. that's another thing. You know, your linebackers are they're going to be able to run a little bit freer. Absolutely. You know, so um, it's going to be it's going to be a huge difference for us. Yeah, looking forward to that. Uh, no picks this week. I am kind of came in here on the – I do. Kind of, I got my picks. You have picks, huh? I got my picks. All right, well, yeah. the coach is going to give his picks. I'm going to give you my picks. I, 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 yeah, I'll give you – let's 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 you you give your picks, and I'll see if I agree with them, and then we'll go with uh, – I'm going I'm to give you my picks. I'm, I'm going to go um, – I'm going to go Michigan, given 22. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go Florida, given 11. Okay. I'm going to go Tennessee, given three. And that's against um, LSU. LSU. Are yeah. they at home that game? Uh, I don't know or care. Okay. Okay. So um, Tennessee. I think LSU escaped. Uh, Auburn should have lost four times. Absolutely. Um, and I think the quarterback's a little dinged up, right? Isn't that, isn't that the case for LSU? Jaden Daniels is 
He, had a, he, was, he didn't finish yeah, the game, yeah, yeah. so that might be something there, yeah. I'm going to go Auburn plus 30. Wow. Plus Against? 30. Who are they playing? It's got to be something in the SEC, obviously. Georgia. Okay. Well, that's a rivalry game, too. Yeah, I'm going okay. Auburn plus 30 over Georgia. Georgia looked like doo-doo last week. I mean, Georgia has not, uh, not only last week, the week before, they almost lost to. Well, somebody made a comment about it. I'm like, and I'm, I'm not a, I mean, I have, I have my biases, but, you know, Stetson Bennett hasn't looked like the guy the last little bit. He's been sort of a little raggedy. Well, they so. almost, they, the, it was a one double A school, I thought. They had, they struggled well, they, with. Well, they, they, they almost, the Missouri last week had him. Missouri, the but there was somebody else the week before. Yeah, they, 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 that was the game that they gave up more points than they gave up all year to anybody. Yeah. It was a, it was a lower. And then I'm going to go um, Mississippi minus 18, and they're playing Vanderbilt, I believe. I, I was talking to a friend the other day, and I said, you know, who's the, what's the surprise team going to come out of it that they may be challenging the SEC or somebody's going to kind of be – I like Ole Miss. I think, I think Kiffin, he's been he's, – he's, what he's doing the last few weeks, he's doing it quietly, but he's doing it effectively. And I think there's something, something to be said about that. He's got that team where he, I think where he's almost – where he wants them at this point. Right. Um, all right, well, before we go, let me – let's answer the question of who – Georgia played the week before, and the score. Uh, um, um, it wasn't. It was like it was like an App State or something like that. I'm not sure though, and I know that's not that's not a FCS or FBS FCS team. Um, but it's. I know they played somebody that was. They they shouldn't have struggled with that they did. And of, of all of your picks, I like your picks. Um, gosh, Auburn. Plus thirty. Over yeah. Georgia, I mean that's a lot of points. That's a, you got to you got to really stack it up against Auburn to do that. And if, I think if they lose by more than thirty, I think they're, I think you're looking at a coach who's he's more than out the door. He might be out the door the next week. Yeah, no doubt. Because I heard that the, you know rumor has it that uh, prime time has, has been interviewed on the slide <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> about going up and, F, and now listen. Oh, thirty nine twenty two to the golden flashes of Kent State. Okay. So I knew, yeah. As a matter of yeah. fact, they were there was a point where they were they had like an eighty yard touchdown run or something. There was some yeah. some some things right there. And they also said, you know, it's hard to replace eleven or how many guys they had that went in the NFL. Yeah. And so it's it's great that they're. I mean, that they 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 slid down to number two, I guess, now in the rankings or whatever they did. Who's one? I think Alabama is. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that yeah. was where I think they ended up. So, um, but it's still like I said, there was that. The slide, it, it might, might be the fact of accumulatively two games they've played sort of uh, yeah, they're down a good, to the They're a good football team, but they're, they are not. Um, they're not explosive. Well, they were at the beginning of the year, but just I think now the people kind of figured them out. They use them, you know, their tight ends were, that's, that's you know, they it. use three tight ends, you know, but uh, I don't know. I just don't. If you look at that, what they said, it's very hard to say you're explosive when you play with three, play three right. tight end offense. Yeah. That's, and, and listen, I know that def, uh, Kirby Smart's a defensive guy. I think he likes to play those games that are more slobber knockery than, than spread out all over the place. But, man, if, if anybody will tell you about that, it's Nick Saban. Nick Saban figured out a long time ago that that was only going to work for so long. And he, and he, and he sort of gave right. it over to the guys and said, we're going to run, open it up a little bit, and we're going to spread it out a little bit, and we're going to do something so we can keep we – got, we've got more points to the other guy. When you're playing LSU to 9-6 slobber knockers, you have a chance That's to That's when he used games. to chase Kiffin down the sidelines and say, hey, you're doing such a great job. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. All right, so I, I will, I'll, I'll, I'll go with you on the Auburn pick. I think that's the one I like the most out of that one. I think it's hard to score 30, win by 30. If Georgia does it, more, more power to them, but I don't know if that's a, yeah. a, a lock on that. I, liked, I, also, I also like the Florida pick, but, man, they, they have a tendency to want to play down. The, in, Missouri's, Missouri's played well. Give them credit. They've played well the last couple games. They, could have, they should have beat Auburn. They screwed that up when, when the kicker missed the 26 Was that yarder. at Auburn? Or? It was at Auburn. Yeah. So I, we'll see. Um, Maybe I don't like that then. Well, but I do like, you know, my favorite one is Ole Miss. Okay. At Vanderbilt. I, I, did you watch Vanderbilt, Alabama? No. Uh, well, they, they had, the Alabama, the, the quarterback could have sat back there for 10 seconds if he wanted. And I, you know, I, I did think Vanderbilt got a little credibility early in the year. They went to Hawaii and won again. They beat somebody else too. So they, they, started, they started off with okay. So maybe they're getting a little break from that. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but, no, I think, I, I think you're right. But I said, to go back to Florida real quick, um, 11 is a number that's, that's, that's definitely a, 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 a nice number because you're going to get a lot of people on both sides who like that, yeah. like that number. That's for sure. All right, Coach. Well, podcast time has come to an end. And we're thank, thankful to Francis 
again, Francis, thank you for being here. He, we, we pulled him out of a, his hurricane shelter, and he, he brought a very, a very capable assistant this time with him as well. And so, uh, so we appreciate her being here as well. So anyway, thank you guys for watching us. Uh, look forward to playing a football game in another week or so. And if that, I uh, hope all you guys are getting healed up and getting your, getting your yards clean like Coach Peacock. I just cleaned uh, uh, the day after. And we'll see you here next time on, the, on, our, on our Tuesday night podcast. Have a good evening.